Hey, what's going on friends and Freedom Crusaders? This is Paul Hetchings with paulhetchings.net coming to you with a very special video. This video is called The Seven Great Lies of Success. And I believe that if you'll tune in and watch this video, you can pick up some tips that can help you, that can inspire you, that can help you move forward in life and business in a better way. But before I get into the content, I did want to let you know that it is the end of 2020 right now. So we're going to kick 2020 in the past. We're going to move into 2021 uh, in a new and powerful way. And tonight, I actually have an invitation for a very good friend and business partner of mine. Uh, her name is Amy Star Allen, and she's going to be doing a really great, powerful uh, live stream. Um, if you go to paulhetchings.net forward slash live, uh, Amy is going to be doing a training tonight and it's entitled five steps to start your dream business and build an audience in any niche. That'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. If you're watching this on the 30th of December, 2020, just go to paulhetchings.net forward slash live. She actually made this really cool four minute video that um, is kind of like a teaser as to the content that's going to be covered tonight. And so if you're finding yourself, uh, you know, finishing up 2020 and maybe not quite certain what you're going to be doing in 2021, uh, maybe you've got some ideas of things you'd like to do. Maybe, you know, you've got some passion stirring around inside, but you're not quite sure how to put it all together. Uh, I think this webinar can be really, really great. So again, that's tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern, paulhitchings.net forward slash live. Uh, check it out. You're going to love it, I think. And with that, let me jump into the content. Um, so I've been reading this book in uh, the month of December. It's called Unlimited Power by Anthony Robbins. It was actually our book of the month for last month. And in this book, Anthony Robbins has a chapter on beliefs. And if you've been in the personal development space for any length of time, you probably heard, you know, beliefs are so powerful. You know, in my very first network marketing company, the company owner taught me that beliefs can be true. They can be false. They can be uh, useful, they can be not useful, um, but whether the belief is true or false, that belief can have a powerful impact and effect on your life. And so I've been a student of belief for a lot of years and hopefully you are all, all also as well. And if not yet, maybe today you'll be a student of belief. Uh, but Anthony Robbins, he has this great chapter on belief and he starts the chapter by calling these beliefs seven great lies of success. And he talks about how a belief can be true and it also maybe maybe we don't know if it's true but regardless what he's noticed is that successful people by and large have demonstrated that they they hold these seven beliefs in in common and he calls them a lie kind of to illustrate that i think beliefs can have an impact on your life whether they're true or not so it's really important that we pay attention to them and also as he states in the book he calls them a lie to help to try to help us maintain a sense, a sense of humility in that if we come across a different piece of information, uh, we have the flexibility to change, right? Whereas maybe you or someone you know has had a belief that they felt was the gospel truth. There was no conversation, no discussion to be had. This is true, it's true, it's true, it's true. And that would be something that you would call a rigid belief. And the thing about rigid beliefs is they don't provide the flexibility to allow you to change. And here's the thing is if that rigid belief turns out to be false, but you're holding on to it so rigidly that you can't change it, now you're stuck in a false belief, right? And so I like this uh, this play on words where he says, these are seven, seven lies of belief, right? Uh, to help us to remember that beliefs should, we always, always should be open to changing based on new information. And so with that, here's the seven great lies um, that uh, I'm actually gonna be putting on my blog at paulhedgings.net. You might actually be watching this video on my blog. And if you're on my blog, you'll see these uh, right below this video. So belief number one is, uh, everything happens for a reason and that reason serves me. Uh, he's noticed that that's, that's a belief that successful people have. Now, is that a true belief? Does, does everything really happen for a reason? Is there destiny? Did, did some divine creator plan every part of our lives and orchestrate it in such a way that everything is happening for the exact reason that, uh, it needs to happen in order to facilitate our personal growth and progression? 
Um, maybe <laughs> that would be hard to prove, you know, to say, well, I can prove it. Um, but what I can say is I can point to stories and experiences in my life that I've chosen to take positive meaning and lessons from. And I've chosen to say that, my gosh, you know, these were experiences that seemed to be happening for a reason to prepare me for some future aspect of my life. And because I look at those experiences that way, I'm always able to take the power from them, the goodness from them, the gold from them, and move forward versus being stuck in the mud, um, which is the alternative. When you look at life and experience as, you know, it's just all random. Uh, maybe maybe some, some uh, um, angry God has something out, you know, they're out to get me. Everything's always happening against me. You know, what that tends to do is that tends to put walls between you and your path forward, uh, makes you fearful of moving forward, and it doesn't inspire faith and confidence. And so this is a great uh, lie or belief of success. Everything happens for a reason and it serves me. Um, I tend to think that this is actually true, but whether it's true or not, believing that tends to help you move forward in a more powerful way. Um, and so that's the first one. Everything happens for a reason and it serves me. Do you believe that that's true or do you believe it's a, uh, a lie? You know, I would love to hear your thoughts on that down below. The second one, there is no such thing as failure, only results. So one thing that keeps people from moving forward or at least, at least seems to keep people moving forward is this fear of failure. You know, I might not make a video because I'm afraid that I would say the wrong thing. I might not make a video because I'm afraid that someone might listen to what I have to say and laugh at me or make fun of me or exit off the video and think I'm stupid. You know, these are all fears. Well, if there's no such thing as fear, if there's only results, now I don't have to be fearful so I can make the video, I can do the thing, and then I can just watch the results. You know, did people watch the video? Did they comment on the video? Did they leave me good feedback or, or did they not? Uh, did the video do what I wanted it to do or did it not? And if you just look at the results, that allows you to do the thing you need to do and then also it allows you to learn from the thing so that you can get better over time. So no such thing as failure, only results. Another way to put this is there's no such thing as uh, failure, only feedback, right? Life is giving us feedback. And if we learn to learn <laughs> from the feedback rather than be fearful of the feedback, then we can move forward and learn and grow and get better in a, in a good productive way, um, you know, moving forward into the future. So here's the third great lie of success. I'm fully responsible for everything that happens. Everything. Radical responsibility. Now, is that true? You know, am, I, am, I, am I really responsible for where I was born or how my parents raised me or the fact that my dad left when I was eight years old? Is that my fault? You know, am I responsible for all of that? Well, maybe, maybe not. Like, there could be a case made against that, but... If I take radical responsibility for it, the beautiful for everything, right? In fact, uh, Anthony Robbins in the book tells this story about, or this uh, example of how maybe your spouse is having a bad day and is grumpy based on information you're, you know, you're, this person is consuming. You've done nothing, but your spouse is grumpy. You could say, well, that's not my fault. That's that's his fault or that's her fault, right? Um, <clears throat> Anthony Robbins says that's taking the easy way out. Um, the, the radical responsible way would be to say, you know what? Yeah, maybe some things are happening that is causing my spouse to be in a negative state, but I have power to do things that can have a positive effect on that, right? That's radical responsibility. And I like to think of this, uh, this principle in terms of a metaphor, uh, we'll call it the magic wand metaphor. I was thinking about the, the beauty of taking responsibility. In fact, let me explain the opposite. The, bat, the, the downside of not taking responsibility is it's like you're taking this wand of power that you could wave and fix things in your life and you're giving it to someone else. Because if it's the Republicans' fault or the Democrats' fault or the President's fault or the whoever's fault, then it's up to them to fix your life. But if you take that wand and you bring it into your own two hands and you say, I'm responsible for everything now you've got a wand that you can wave over certain aspects of your life to change things, right? To change things. And you might say, well, gosh, you know, um, I'm not responsible for what's happening in Washington, D.C., nor could I really have any effect on, on that. But if you've got that wand of, of power in your hand, 
uh, here's some things you could do. You could shut the news off. You could wave so so that at least it's not affecting your state. Or you could choose to focus on your life in such a way that you become as successful as possible and as principle-centered as possible. And you become uh, just a shining light of leadership to the degree that at some point maybe you could go into politics and have a change. You know, that's taking radical responsibility, right? Be the change you wish to see in the world is what Gandhi said. So radical responsibility. Uh, I'm fully responsible for everything that happens. Great lie uh, or belief of success. Here's number four. It's not necessary to understand everything to be able to use everything. Uh, I remember when I first got started in network marketing, I felt like I had to understand all the products, the comp plan. I had to read all the company policies. In fact, I remember reading the company training manual to such degree that I found misspellings in it and I would report them to the company and I'd be like, hey, you know, we need to fix this. You know, we need to be professional, fix these misspellings. And I went a year without making any money. Right? So I, I felt like I had to learn everything. Um, imagine if you had to know how to build an engine before you're able to drive a car. How terrible would that be, right? We don't have to do that. We can just go drive cars. And so I think part of being successful, as Anthony Robbins points out here, is to know that you don't have to know everything. Uh, we, other people know things. Other people have skills and talents. We can utilize those um, and we can focus on the things that matter and we can pick up knowledge as we go, right? As we go. Another great example in the network marketing direct sales space is the idea that you have to know everything about your product. You have to know all the scientific tests that have been done. You have to know all the facts and stats about the ingredients and, and all this kind of stuff. Um, you can be really knowledgeable on that and be horribly, uh, be a be not have any success selling the product, right? And why is that? Well, we know that facts tell and stories sell, testimonials sell, enthusiasm sells. And if you've got no stories, testimonials, or enthusiasm, and all you've got is a list full of facts, well, now you know everything, but you're not getting the result that you want, right? So that's another great example of how you don't have to understand everything to be able to use everything. You just need to understand the important things and take action on those. Number five, people are the greatest resource, right? Well, are people the greatest resource? Um, Money is a pretty good resource, isn't it? Uh, yeah, money is a good resource. Political influence, that's a pretty good resource. But he says people are the greatest resource. Um, when I first got started in network marketing, the company owner said, listen, if you want to be successful in this business, here's my best advice for you. Become a student of human nature. He didn't say learn all the ins and outs of all the products, although it is important to be knowledgeable, you know, about your products, but he said, become a student of human nature. I heard another, another seven figure mentor one time. He said, this is a people business. And when you understand how to move the people, the people will move the products, right? So I do believe this is a, this is a great lie, uh, AKA truth of success is that people are the greatest resource. And when we learn how to work with people, understand people, communicate with people, get along well with people, um, a lot of times we find that the business success just kind of, kind of flows, right? So that's number five. Number six, work is play, right? Work is play. I remember when I used to work at a, in a call center, um, I, I, I actually made okay money uh, and I could have made probably decent money. I probably could have made six figures or more uh, had I stayed on that career path. Um, but I hated the way that it crushed my soul, or at least it felt like it was crushing my soul. I didn't enjoy it. And so I made a decision way back when that if I was going to, uh, if I had to make less money and do something that I loved, that would be way better than making more money and doing something that I that I didn't love. And so that was part of the inspiration for me going full-time in my network marketing business way back then is I said, hey, I love freedom, I love personal development, I love people, I love possibility, I love potential. Um, and so I went for that. Now it turned out I've made probably a lot more money doing what I do than had I stayed in that job. So it's worked out in my favor, but even if it hadn't worked out in my favor financially, um, I, I think I'd be so much happier. Uh, in fact, I know I would be. Napoleon Hill says one of the greatest tragedies in life is that so few people are engaged in a work which they love. Um, you know, there's another great quote from someone where they said, you know, love, love what you do and you'll never work a day in your life. Uh, I think that's true. You know, it's important to find something that you love. And so <clears throat> if you haven't found that, that's going to be part of what Amy's talking about tonight on the live at paulhutchings.net forward slash live uh, tonight, the 30th, the 30th of December, is how to take what's inside the, 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 the calling of your soul, you know? Um, I have this quote in my office that says, uh, 
uh, follow the follow is it says follow your heart your heart is the only compass you will ever need this life is your message to the world let it be extraordinary what is the calling of your heart you know is there something inside that's stirring and calling you forward um, you know, that's what we're going to be talking about. Amy's going to be talking about tonight, uh, but find something that you can love to do. You know, when you wake up in the morning, it's not having to force yourself out of bed. It's you wake up because you're so excited to go to work and get it done, um, that it's play, you know, and you'll never work a day in your life. I think that's so true. And the last one, <clears throat> number seven, there is no abiding success without commitment. Uh, Seth Godin said the long cut is the only real shortcut. We've actually adopted that in part of our philosophy, our Freedom Crusaders Manifesto. The long cut is the only real shortcut. Anthony Robbins said that most people totally overestimate what they can do in a year, but totally underestimate what they can do in 10. And I think about my own journey, my first year in home business, I made double zeros. I spent money, I, 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 I lost way more than I made because I made zero and I was spending money to do it. Um, and, and so a year I made no money, but then nine years later, a decade, 10, 10 years, totally financially free. And I think about um, all the people that start a business, a home-based business, network marketing business, what have you, and they don't see success in the first little bit and, and, and they, they throw in the towel. Um, there is no abiding success without commitment. Uh, great lie of success number seven. So that's it, my friend. Would love to hear your thoughts on these. Uh, do you find that these are good beliefs, useful beliefs? Um, are there beliefs that you've noticed that you or other successful people have that weren't on this list? Would love to hear your thoughts down below. Whatever you do, always go for your dreams. If you're not already subscribed to my list and getting my emails and want to get more content like this, definitely head over to paulhetchings.net, click on one of the links on my blog, get a free gift and get subscribed to my list for more content like this. My mission is freedom through principle-centered leadership. So I wanna do the very best that I can to create content to help people be financially free um, so that their time can be disconnected from their money and they can do what they love in life. That's my mission. And so that's the type of content that I create. And with that, I'm gonna give you one more encourage, uh, encouragement to check out Amy's webinar tonight if uh, you'd like to uh, take a peek at that. And by the way, she does have a really cool promotional video. If you go there right now, paulhitchings.net forward slash live, you can watch the four minute video and that'll give you a really great uh, teaser as to whether or not tonight's webinar will be something that you can get value from. I think it, I think it will be, uh, but you'll have to be the judge of that. So. Have a great day. Always go for your dreams. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now. Hi.